guys, today I'm going to show you how to change the player order in your Nintendo Switch. So, with that said, I'm gonna, what I mean by that is two. So now, right now, the current positioning. Now the current positioning is this. So no controllers attached to the switch. Pro controller is player one, Joy Cons is player two, Pro Controller two is player three, and Pro Controller three is player four. Now I'm gonna show you how to change the order. So all you gotta do is go down to where it says controller so you want to go down once not news not this blue you want to go to this one here controllers you want to press a or touch the screen now from here i'm going to show you how to change the order so right now we have this so all you got to do on the screen is go to change grip order now, if you want the Joy-Cons to be player one, use one. If you want a Joy-Con to be player one, there it is. If you want the Pro Controller, so right now I'm using a single Joy-Con. The other Joy-Con I'm not using. Now, if you want the Pro Controller to be player two, press it there. Player three and player four. You want to press L R on all of them, and it'll work. For third-party controllers, you just wanna just press any button and they'll pop up. But for normal controllers, you just wanna press L and R. The controllers like the Pro Controller Original and the Joy Cons, like I have here. So now, our order has changed. Joy-Con is one, Pro Controller is two, other Pro Controller is number three, and finally, Pro Controller number four is, wait, Pro Controller is player four. So now, you can also change it again. You can change it to however you like. So then, for example, um, instead of um, a pro controller can be player one, another pro controller can be player two, the blue Joy-Con can be player three, and uh, the pro controller can be player four. So as you can see, a fifth controller popped up because I accidentally pressed it. Up to eight controllers, but only four in-game. So... And if you pop if you pop a Joy-Con up without the change grip order screen, it'll be registered wrongly. It's wrong right now. So if you want that to happen really, you'll have to go and get it either into player one, player two, player three, or player four. So yeah. So now the 3.0 update, so if you updated your Nintendo Switch to the 3.0 update or higher, you'll have these two other, you'll have one extra option. The option is find controllers. So if you want to go and click on that, for example, the controllers that support Rumble, the official Nintendo licensed ones. So, for example, if your Joy-Con is hidden somewhere you can't find it, just press on the Joy-Con and it will start vibrating. Let me show you. So, I'm sure you can hear that. Yeah. So, they're going to vibrate. Now, if you want to do the red one, 
same thing. Go on to the red one. And yeah, so that's another useful feature if your controllers are lost. So with that said, so now there's also an option of pairing new controllers. So for Joy-Cons, let me show you with one of my already one of my Joy-Cons here. So. For example, with this little Joy-Con, you just want to slide it onto the switch like you normally do and it'll pair back up like normal. Or you can also press the pair button on top. So let me show you that option. So you want to go to view other pairing methods and you'll see it. So pairing controllers with a USB, that's for the Pro Controller if you want to do that. You um you plug it into a USB port on the switch dock, then you plug the USB C into the Pro Controller. And for Joy Cons, like I do, you press the little sync button. Also for Pro Controllers, there's another sync button. So it's right next to the syncing. So now you wanna just press the parent button and hold it, and now it'll start searching for controllers. And very soon. It will most likely find a Bluetooth device and connect. So I keep holding that sync button. And very likely later it will connect. So right now, you want those these bars to be flashing like this. And if this doesn't work, like here, it's not working. So if that doesn't work, you just want to do the simple sliding on to the switch. And if that doesn't work, get yourself a Joy-Con charging grip, not the official one, charging grip with the USB-C on the top. Connect it just like you would with the Pro Controller, and then it will like most likely connect. So, like here, like here, I am gonna slide this on here, slide on the switch, and it should say paired. Yeah, there it is. So that's. Those are also easy, other easy ways to charge your uh, Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and Nintendo Switch Pro Controllers. So, with that said, it's pretty easy. So, there's one more option I'm going to show you. Oh, actually, the other ones just close. So, another, another few um, neat things about the Nintendo Switch is, for example, if you're changing from a smaller TV to a bigger TV, you may, from a bigger TV to a smaller TV, I mean from a smaller to bigger, then you, you most likely will be we'll have to adjust the screen size so you just want to head over to system settings like i did go to controllers and tv settings then select adjust screen size now you want to click on it and you can go down and up and you want to you want to align the arrows with your um edge so in this case, my TV is 96%. So when I was switching to my, um, this TV, I have a TV on the ground and it's a smaller TV. So when I was switching there, I had to reduce the screen size. So this is a neat, neat little feature that Nintendo implemented into their consoles. 
most likely you will have it if you have the three on um, 2.0 up 3.0 update and higher so now there's also another thing that is tv resolution so for example if your um tv is um like a old dvd player tv you would want to set it to 480 and this is how it looked like so you'll do that 480p if your tv is 720 you want to go to 720. if you want it to be 1080 go for 1080 if it does support this tv supports 1080p so i'm just gonna leave it on 1080p and if you're scared that you're gonna break your tv and make it overheat somehow you just want to put it on automatic the, the nintendo switch will set it on for you right now automatic is 1080p so automatic is set to 1080p so if you want to leave it on 1080p like I do, go ahead and leave it. So, that's another thing. And if you want to transfer data between two Nintendo Switches, you just want to connect them via these on-the-go cables. So if you have a USB, if you have a USB to USB-C charger, you want to plug the charger into the USB and plug this into your Switch. Then plug the other end of your charger into your other switch, then it'll most likely save the data. So, with that said, those are other neat features. So now, there's also, I'll show you some behind the scenes look of the video. So, how I like to set these Pro Controllers up is pretty simple. I got a Magic NS adapter. Want to plug a receiver into there? And, and plug it into your switch dock. Then you wanna, and the Magic NS is made by Mayflash. You wanna grab your 3601 controller and you just wanna, Xbox 3601 controller, and you just wanna press and hold the Xbox button until it syncs up. So that is how you can, uh, change um use other things so the switch will recognize it won't recognize it as an xbox 360 controller instead it'll recognize it as like the average pro controller pro controller like it is right there so yeah but the player indicator won't work so one two three and four it'll always stay on one only It'll work sometimes if you have it on a wired connection, but I don't have a wired 360 controller, instead I have this one. So if you have a wired one, instead of the plug in the receiver, you plug in the wire of the 360 controller. So it's pretty much the same as if you would plug it into your Xbox. So, yeah. So, there's also something set, some setting that needs to be on. By default, it's off Pro Controller Wired Communication. If you have a regular Pro Controller or Joy-Con, it won't be able to read Amiibos. So, you have to keep it on. So, if you don't want to lose all your save data, then you wouldn't want to turn it on. I don't have any Amiibos, so I'm fine with turning that thing on. And it also allows you to use your Pro Controller on a wired connection to make it like more wired. And the Pro Controller comes with one, I think. So, also you can change button mapping for the Joy-Cons and wireless other controllers. Not third party wired ones. Those don't work at all. So, that is cool thing too. So the final thing, controller vibration if your controllers support vibration you'll be able to turn it on and they'll vibrate every now and then but these third these xbox 360 controllers and other controllers won't rumble on the right times so the third party wired ones will work fine but 
like the one that Nintendo didn't intentionally um, put to use was these 360 controllers, so they can be wired. They can um, use rumbling. So that's, I think that is pretty much it for uh, a controller vibration. So there's also some other things, hidden in for devices, you can check for problems with the touch screen by seeing if it'll follow your finger. So let me go into it real quick. It has touch screen. So now you can see it on your finger. Of course, right now it's on the TV, so you want to see if it follows your hand like that. So if your touch screen is damaged, of course, it won't follow you in one part. So you want to just quickly go through that if you're selling it. So, because you don't want any problems with your switch, right? So, you can press the bottom button. It will be either B or A. And controller buttons is mm, just test the button. So, X, A, Y, B, in click, S, L, and S, R. The pair button, home button, capture button, plus and, and uh, analog sticks cannot be checked in the pair button and the volume button and power button on your nintendo switch can't be checked so you want to hold down any button to end the test so that's test input devices now if you want to disconnect your controllers for example you're taking your joy cons to a friend's nintendo switch and you want to de-pair them just like if you well, the sync button. So you can also just press the sync button and they'll be sync. But if your sync button is broken, or some sometimes it could, like mine is, you would want to go to disconnect controllers and hold plus or minus to disconnect your controllers. So I'll show you with the blue. I'll show you with uh, the blue Joy-Con this time. So you need to remove it from the dock. Um, I'm gonna quickly. Remove it. So, I removed it, and here's my screen. Now you wanna go to disconnect controllers, and now you either hold plus or hold minus. So I'm gonna hold minus. Actually, you need to hold X. So, it won't work on your, um, let, um, let, uh, left Joy-Con. So first, you're gonna have to do it with your right Joy-Con. Press X, or in this case, that. Now all controllers have been disconnected. Now you can repair your red Joy-Con by sliding it back onto the switch. And now your blue Joy-Con is disconnected. So with the red Joy-Con, you don't need to do all that stuff I said. You just need to press and hold X. So, that's how you're supposed to do. Disconnect controllers. So, I'm only going to do the um, controllers and sensors. Maybe I might do some other ones like themes, notifications later. So, you can check the touchscreen sensitivity. You can change it. Stylus makes it easier for styluses, of course. And you can also calibrate your control sticks and calibrate motion controls. So calibrate control sticks is the same as test controller buttons. I'm going to press in. You can test the um, analog stick in. And you can check if the analog stick is actually working as an analog stick. And you want to check if it's not working. Press X to calibrate. Now, follow the Nintendo Switch's directions. And soon, you will see calibration complete. And now, you can also do motion controls. You want to calibrate consoles. So if you want to calibrate your consoles, you want to disconnect the controllers. Now, it's, please place the console on a flat, stable surface. So calibration failed because I wasn't putting it. Now I'm just going to put it. So calibrate console. There. Let it do its thing for two or three minutes. 
And soon it'll say calibration has been completed. Same thing with the Joy Cons. You want to press and hold, press hold, hold minus or plus, then put it on a flat surface and just wait till the calibration is completed. I'm going to do both of them. So yeah, that's basically most of the things you can do in the controllers and sensors setting. So, themes is also a basic white, so this is basic white. And basic flat, it theme changes the background of your switch. Wait a sec. I think there's also a thing called change display colors. There's the same thing, except it'll change the color of your game. Invert colors makes it all inverted, like upside down. And black and white makes it all gray. So personally, I like to keep it on default. And you can also do zoom, which is if you press and hold home two times, you can zoom in, and then you can lock. So you can go home in this procedure, and just do that, and then you just press home three times in a row to home screen. Yep, there we go. So, that's also a thing. So, that's what I'm gonna do for today. This video is done. I may do future videos of more settings in um, um, your user page and system settings. So, with that said, bye now.